Hello Fratellowers and welcome back to Mystic Worlds and as always this is Safe Haven and you join me here at our little way station in the cave near the binary dungeon that we conquered in the last episode and I want to show you before I transport it all over back to my main base all the supplies I got out of there so I took up all the redstone and by the way I did speak to Damara and he said it was cool for me to take all this stuff so almost a single chest worth of redstone over two stacks of repeaters, 33 redstone torches, 17 sticky pistons, and 24 note blocks. I also picked up a bunch of glowstone that was in the floor, as that was pretty handy. Uh, I've also been through and collected up all the coal and iron from the cave. I also ran into some more diamond as well um, in a little cave next to the entrance of the dungeon, which I picked up as well but before we go ahead here and head back to base there is one thing I want to investigate and this is actually the way out I want to go the other way and there is something in the binary room that we need to investigate that I didn't last time and I would like to check out so we're gonna head down here into the blazing caverns we're gonna go through the blazing caverns and into the binary room and then we're going to investigate it so I'm doing pretty well here, supply-wise. Uh, we have a good amount of coal now, an okay amount of iron, a pretty decent amount of diamond. Oh boy. There we go. We have a not bad amount of, uh, of other materials as well. Why are all the mobs in here all of a sudden? It was quiet earlier when I was ferrying supplies back and forth. I guess it might be daytime now. That's the only thing I can think of here. So let's head back into this room. I did light it all up in here to uh, kind of prevent the uh, the mobs from falling down on me here. So there's a little little nook to investigate, and it might be nothing, but it might be something. I think yeah, it's right here. So what do we got? Ooh, a chest and a redstone torch. I'll take the redstone torch. Nice diamond sword bow and some arrows and, and four apples and some planks well that was worth it <laughs> just a little nook I didn't know if it was a place where there was some ambient lighting or or anything like that but it was well worth investigating there's something else there but I don't think that is anything up here is where I have been collecting all the supplies I did leave some stuff up here like the stone blocks as you can see I have mined out a whole ton of glowstone out of here so that we can use that in our base um, there was no reason to collect it all. I can always come back here if I decide I want more of it, but I have so much glowstone now. I don't think I'll ever need any more again, but if we do, I've got a good place to come back and collect it. And even then, there is still uh, the other cavern that we investigated where there was that lava lake and the blazers uh, that we took out in the other episode as well. So glowstone is pretty easy to come by now. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to ferry all of these items back to my main base. And at that point, I'm going to talk to you guys about what we're going to be doing in today's episode. As I want to kind of work on my base a little bit. Now we have access to redstone, as I said in the last episode. So I'll be right back, guys. Okay, guys, so I'm back at base here, and I'm beginning to start and do some upgrades. And... The first thing I'm doing is kind of finishing off the storage room here with some item frames. I'm going to put a clock up on the wall over here. As this is one thing I think we uh, we really need so that I can tell the time before going outside. And there we go. So I've got a number of projects I want to do in my base here. And you can already see one of them is on my hot bar right now. And that is we're going to add some redstone lamps. There we go, and we're going to get rid of all the torches in and around this base here. Now, in addition to that, there's a number of other projects that I want to add. And, and they are, firstly, uh, semi-automatic farms. That is something that uh, we've already started work on in there, but we haven't finished. And that will be something I would like to finish. Uh, I would like to reclaim some of these stone bricks if I can. They're kind of valuable still. So, that is definitely a project that I want to work on. This right here is going to be a dark room that we're going to work on adding, hopefully today. I also want to work, maybe, on adding 
uh, a tree farm. That is something that I feel that we could really do with in the back of the main farm area. I would like to add some passive mob farms, so cows, sheep, chickens, pigs, things like that. That would be a great addition to this base, I feel, so that we can start and farm better quality food uh, more easily. I have a cow farm currently, though it's over at my first base that we had in this world, which I kind of don't use anymore, so it would be nice to kind of have everything over here if we can. I'm taking down the torches off the walls because I don't want them on the walls. I just want them on the floor. And that will just be redstone lamps. So I kind of like the ambient roof look to this base. There we go. Reclaim some torches. Still pretty dark around here, but it's certainly looking better than it was. So take that out. And then that. Yeah, and we'll do the... Uh, same on the other side here. Don't want to fall down there though, so I'm being careful. I don't know if that's going to be light enough. I guess it is, so that's good. So we can take that out now and that, as we don't need those anymore. There is a torch over here that we don't need. It's just going to kind of be a slow process as I kind of adapt the redstone lamps in and take the torches out one by one. I do want to take this clock down a moment here and add a little detail to this which I think it makes it look better. I mean some people might say it doesn't but I feel that it does and just give it a bit of a light so that we can see it. I really like that. We may add a map underneath it at some point. Do I even have the materials for a map? I don't think I do. You need, what, paper, which I definitely have. Well, I guess we have redstone and iron. So, I guess I could make a map. I don't own a compass, so... I guess I would have to make one. And obviously, I'm going to add some redstone lamps through here. And in the farm area, and stuff like that. Um, so, mainly, it's a tree farm I want to add. I want to work on semi-automatic farms in here. I want to upgrade the skeleton trap to make it where I just have to punch the mobs instead of using a stone sword. That is one thing I would like to do now that we have access to those materials. Uh, I guess we'll just put one redstone lamp in the middle here. I think that should be good. I don't know if it's going to light it all though. I'll be amazed if it does. I'm mainly concerned about up here on the benches. It's going to be too dark. It's light level 8. I think that means it's light level 9 at my feet. Um, what's the corners like here? 8. So, I think we should be okay here. Obviously, no mobs can spawn on the brewing stands. Uh, so, I think we should be good in there. That's plenty of light for that. I guess I could add another lamp in the ceiling. Uh, I don't know what effect that would have, though. Does that really... No, that doesn't affect it, that's just a, a waste of a lamp, so we'll reclaim that. And I think that should be good for now, we'll just have to see though. So this right here, we're going to do every other torch, I think. And just get rid of the torches in this room. I'm not sure about the end of the room though yet. I mean, I guess I could flip them over. I suppose it wouldn't hurt. So it's just going to be a little bit of experimentation at this point and seeing what works and fitting everything together as best as I can. But they're the main projects. I'm going to work on them kind of off camera and I'm going to do a style of recording where I'm going to bring you guys back in at certain points where certain things have been completed. And uh, then, as that progress gets made, we will... Uh, We'll kind of discuss what still needed to be done, how things work, and stuff along those lines. So, I'm going to work on these lamps here for a little bit, guys, and I will be back with you probably when I've done a couple of other things as well off camera. So, I'll be right back. Okay, guys, so I've been working very hard here, and I've put in all the redstone lamps for each of the areas. We have them down here for the blaze trap, the main room. Uh, there's some that we placed in the storage room, the one in the brewing room, and I also added them down here in the pathway to the skeleton trap, 
and also in the farm we've got some ceiling lamps which are really quite nice and in addition to working on that I've also added the pistons to the farm now ideally I would have used normal pistons for this but I don't have any so I only had the sticky pistons and I was one short and I don't mind crafting one I just didn't want to craft all of these bear in mind, bearing in mind that my iron supply is still pretty slim and I need it for anvils and tools and things like that and you'll also notice that the cactus is gone it was right here the melon just grew so the cactus is going to get moved shortly and we're going to have a fully automatic cactus farm and these two sections right here are going to be merged together and we're going to have a nether wart farm there when we find some soul sand so everything's looking pretty cool uh, we've got an area kind of marked out there for trees. Down there is going to be passive mob farms, so cows, pigs, chickens, and sheep, uh, which we will get down here at some point later in the video. Uh, obviously, the crop farms haven't really changed at all. Now, that's not all I did. One other thing I did ov over here was the entrance to the monument. I kind of cleaned up a little bit. I wasn't too happy with the way it was looking. So I kind of spruced it up a little bit by adding in this decorative uh, wall paneling, I guess you could call it. And I also extended Damara's pattern in the floor a little bit just to make sure it was nice and bright down here. Just another little small tweak, but I think it looks really nice. Aside from that, I also made a small, small, small tweak to the skeleton traps over here. We do have a cactus in here now, and the cactus is uh, just so that I can toss spare bows, bones and arrows onto it because we have way too many now. <laughs> so you will see now that there is this dispenser here. Ooh, my key got stuck there for some reason. Uh, so, this dispenser shoots out lava and it dispenses lava for just long enough so that it brings skeletons down to one hit. This is essentially a 10 second mob softener. Now if you want to take a look at the redstone it's extremely simple it's just a repeater behind it and then another repeater set to four ticks. Now this will not work in 1.5 and later. There is another design out that I used in my Minecraft tutorial series when I did the monster spawner trap if you're interested. So there is that. I did have to make a small tweak to reset their fall damage. I just added a sign here and then some water above it because this will only work on full health skeletons. Got a couple in here. I guess I can demonstrate it in action there. And I haven't done really anything else. Uh, we are, however, though, going to make a diamond work pick. So, why are we doing that? I can't keep using stone picks, and I'm going to burn through all my iron really quickly. We have a decent supply of diamonds right now, so I'm not too upset regarding that. This guy right here is a full health skeleton. And I could either use my looting sword there or a stone sword, something like that. Eventually, I'll probably hook up a proper piston system to prevent that. But for right now, I mean, it's just a minor trade-off in reality uh, to what we were having to do with stone swords and so forth. So I'm not too worried. I think that that was a, uh, a good improvement there. So being as we have a decent amount of diamond now, I want to switch over at least to diamond picks for the time being. So, we have a diamond pick in here. This is the one we made that we used to mine up the obsidian for the enchantment table. We have one we found in a chest, and I also have 29 diamonds. Now, I also have a diamond sword and another diamond sword. This one, if I'm going to do some book enchants, if I get a sharpness 3 or, or a sharpness 4, then I'm going to upgrade this sword here and make it better. I think we found this in a chest somewhere. And then I've got something to repair it with um, further down the road here. Bows are really cheap for me to make. Uh, shovels, I can last with a stone shovel. It really doesn't matter too much. And I have an iron axe, uh, which I can enchant. And if that gives me unbreaking three, then that's probably going to last long enough as I don't do too much wood cutting compared to the amount I use my pick and the amount I use my sword here. So they're the big targets right now. Um, so we are going to make this work pick because this is going to be useful more imminently. Uh, I, I'm going to have to dig a tree farm back there so in order to do that I'm going to need a good pick which is going to make it doable in a reasonable time frame. And also uh, the dark room as well even though that's more construction based still it's nice to have a good tool in case I misplace blocks or whatever to remove them quickly. So that's always an advantage. 
So that's why I'm going to go ahead and make this diamond pick. Um, I can repair it now, so I think it's worthwhile. And we're probably going to be running into more diamond fairly soon. So let's start by renaming it because we need to do that first. So worker, there we go. Now let's add efficiency four. That's going to cost me seven levels. And then unbreaking three is going to cost me nine. So we have a diamond work pick now, which we could start and use for tree farm. Uh, this one is almost out, and this one is pretty close. I may repair this, though, simply because it has Fortune 3 on it. Uh, rename it and then repair it with another iron pick. Uh, as I say, because it has Fortune 3 on it. I do have this one. That has some breaking on it. Um, but I, I'm not going to mess with that right now. I'm going to leave that as is. So, of the books I have left here, we have Silk Touch, which I'm thinking I'm going to put on Shears. Might be useful to get grass and cobwebs. Uh, we've got punch too, not really that useful. Power four is not bad, but uh, I guess I could upgrade my bow to power five, but I have another bow I want to do that with. And feather falling four. Now, if I get a protection book, I may build a new pair of iron boots with that feather falling book. Uh, as for the armor here, this is just my good armor and some junky armor in there. So, yeah, I mean. The next steps here are going to definitely be to upgrade my sword to a diamond sword. I don't really need looting necessarily on my sword uh, because we're going to have a dark room anyway. The only thing that I won't be able to collect a lot of is ender pearls, but we do have that enderman spawn in which we may get around to doing something with today, and that might be ideal to take over there uh, this sword and uh, farm some enderman for ender pearls. So that's something else to consider there. So yeah, what I'm going to do now, I think, is I'm going to work on digging out the tree farm, because that's quite the big project. I want to have basically an 8x8 grid of tree spawning spots, I guess you could call it, where I plant the saplings. And that will give me a total of 64 trees. I'm then going to go and collect up some birch and spruce saplings, so that if we ever want to use that wood, we can. And that will support the small oak trees the uh, birch trees, the pine trees, and the small jungle trees. If I want to farm jungle giants, then I can just do that on the surface, but honestly, it's not a big deal. I am going to take my shears as well and head up to the uh, surface, and I'm going to collect some vines off a jungle tree that I've got grown, and I'm going to set up a small vine farm in here. I'm not sure where I'm going to put it yet. I'm thinking maybe over here, just somewhere on the walls, so that I can farm some vines in case I ever need them for anything. So that's another project that I'm going to be getting on with, but things are doing pretty good around here. All we really need to do now is tree farm. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the bed right now, uh, the dark room, and I think, honestly, that's about it. Um, there's not too much more needed to be done, honestly, so I'm going to get on with that, guys, and I'll probably bring you in once I've got the uh, room of the tree farm dug, so I will be right back. Okay guys, so I've been working on the tree farm a little bit here and I've been working on carving out the room. It turns out most of it is sand, which uh, we found when we dug this part of the base, but it was even more sand than I anticipated. So we already knew that that chest was full of sand. So we had about a row of sand I think in this chest, but now that one is full, as is that one, that one, that one, and some of this one. So. We are set for sand, essentially, for the rest of this map. Uh, I'm going to be making lots of TNT out of that as soon as we get the dark room rolling. And this is the tree farm over here. The start of it, I guess you could call it, though. Uh, it does need kind of cleaning up. Obviously, I'm going to put some walls on and things like that. That is a marker right there to tell me the correct height that I need to fill in up here. Um, we did actually end up getting exposed to the sky in some parts, so I've had to fill it in as best I can. But it's looking pretty good. Uh, these are all the places where the trees are going to go. I also started messing around with design ideas. Um, maybe we'll take a look at this here real quick. I'm going to get some spruce. I did go and collect the other two types of saplings that we didn't have. And spruce, sprucey spruce. And do we have a workbench somewhere in here? I mean, we have this. I guess we'll just use this right now. And let me craft up a bunch of stairs here, and we'll just uh, kind of mess around with the stair design. I kind of want to use a different flavor of stair to kind of complement the oak. Um, 
and see how that goes. I'm not going to use redstone laps in here because they would just simply be too many. And I want to kind of use my redstone wisely, so to speak. So I'm thinking something a little bit like that. And we're going to have the regular oak wooden slabs and stairs around like this. And we're going to have a decent walkway and we can then chop our trees down. They will grow tall enough that I can uh, get the maximum efficiency out of them. But I will be able to cut them down completely without having to use a dirt pillar or anything like that. So I'm thinking I want to go with something a little bit like this. I guess we could try and work on it here as well. I don't have any glowstone on me right now. So I can't show you what I want to do with the lighting. But essentially... In these corner points, so this block right here, I'm probably going to have a piece of glowstone. And that will be the lighting which will be throughout this cavern. And I need to work on that. And then I've got a design in mind for the ceiling that I want to try and use. And then maybe we'll look into cleaning up the walls. I'm not entirely sure what I want to do with the walls yet. I may just simply make it all cobble. That might be the easiest thing to do. Um, because I'm pretty limited on room here. And also, with all this sand, it's going to be difficult to do anything ridiculously fancy to it. So the best thing I could probably do is just make it all cobble for the time being. So, I'm going to work on the floor and ceiling. And then we'll probably uh, come back and I'll discuss what I want to do with the walls here. I'm going to have to bone meal a bunch of trees. But thankfully, the skelly farm covers that. And then probably at that point, we will work on moving on to the dark room being as we're going to have a renewable source of wood now. We've also got a decent amount of cobble from digging out the tree farm as well. So things are looking up here, guys. Uh, plenty of work still to do, but things are looking good. So once again, I shall be back in a little bit. Okay, guys, so I thought I would give you just another quick little update here. I'm chopping down a spruce tree, and I'm working now on the ceiling. I decided to go with sort of a pattern ceiling. As you can see, I used birch and spruce. And I'm starting to kind of map out a grid real quick here. Um, the disadvantage with the height of the tree farm now is that I can't instantly bone meal trees. Whoop, I don't know what happened there. But they will grow on their own. So it's not great for bone mealing. But if I do need wood in a real emergency, then I can just bone meal some jungle giant trees and cut them down on the surface. But it's looking pretty good now. Let's get some more spruce here. Uh, it's going to take quite a little bit of time to finish this roof. And I want to do that off camera. But it's definitely coming together now. Um, so this is what it looks like from up above. We just want a, a nice grid type pattern here. And we'll just finish this off. I also put in the stone bricks around the edge. I cut those up and put those in. That looks pretty cool. Still need to work on the walls yet, of course. And that's probably just going to be cobblestone. But then I think we'll be finished at that point. So I'm going to carry on here for a little bit. And I will be back in a little while. So, see you in a minute. Okay, guys. So, here we go. The tree farm is now finished. And it took a lot of work. But the walls and the ceiling are wrapped up. And I've left this up here blank. Um, whoops. Let's try and do that again. <laughs> so I left up, left up here blank as I didn't really think it was necessary to fill it all in uh, completely. Good, that's not open to the sky. And we may want to put some stuff up here eventually. I may use this as a bulk storage area or whatever. Especially because we keep running into all that sand. It may be an idea to start stashing stuff I'm getting in bulk up here. So... I really like this, I like the ceiling pattern. I've uh, tried some birch trees in here and it works first time. I'm thinking I'm going to put in some oak now and see how that goes. I'm not going to bone meal them. I'm just simply going to let them grow naturally and we'll see where we go. So I'm going to start planting these. So the next thing to do really is going to be the dark room. Um, which is going to be over in the other side of the base. So I'm going to work on that again off camera. And I'll probably bring you in at key points. Um, I mean there's not too much that I could say regarding the dark room. Uh, I'm probably just going to kind of build it and then show you how it works afterwards. And then we will also hook up a 
fully automatic cactus farm and a fully automatic egg farm and maybe after that we'll see how much time we've got left I may look into adding some passive mob farms into the base here as well and we also want to add a bedroom though I don't think we'll get that done today that will have to be a separate project for another day I'm afraid whoops so we've got the uh, tree farm loaded with trees uh, hopefully I'm gonna do a level 30 enchant on that iron axe I picked up from that box and we'll see uh, how it goes hopefully we can kinda cut the trees down fairly fast and we can get lots and lots of wood so that we can uh, make lots of torches and everything that you need wood for so tree farm now finished uh, time to put some things away I have lots of junk on me and then onto the dark room fun <laughs> Okay guys, so I've been working on the dark room and I have now, what I believe to have done, finished it. <laughs> that made no sense whatsoever, but I believe I've done enough to now say that it is finished. As you can see I've got some string, bones and arrows in there. Um, it doesn't seem too efficient. We're going to do a little bit of uh, theory crafting here. And I think that part of the reason for that, and I've got a little x-ray shoot that I can uh, pop myself into here. I think the reason behind that... Can I break that? Well, I guess I can put it back later. I think one of the main reasons for that is because the mobs are stuck in that dark room. It's really hard to see, actually. Uh, let me get that back. Let me turn the lights on and let's see... Because the mobs won't despawn in there. Oops, I'm just breaking everything today. Some zombie flesh in there. Let's turn that on. And that will put the lights on. And then let's go back to this again. Now, it could be that the drops are getting destroyed because I can only really use a lava blade for this. Over anything else, the lava blade is right there. It's really hard to tell. Um, I think some of it is the fact that the mob drops are burning up in the lava. I could try and use a cactus, maybe, instead. Um, that would make things significantly harder. As you can see, we've got another skeleton coming through here. We probably need to get the other side of it to really analyze that, but I think part of the problem is the top floor of mobs are not moving because I am too far away. So we may have to come up with an AFK spot, uh, essentially, to really determine the best position. But then I'm going to have to run down here and collect it every five minutes. The idea was to be able to stand at this drop chute and collect thing collect things uh, from it now some of it could be due to low efficiency um, because there's a lots of other places for mobs to spawn around here there's all of this cave that I'm probably gonna half slab over at some point depending on what the rates are like and at night time this is not really gonna have much of any function simply because it's too small and there's gonna be mobs spawning outside all over the landscape uh, but I have got some supplies from it just the supplies I do have have not been very much. I'll uh, break that and put that all back now as we don't need it anymore. So it's interesting. I'm going to have to mess with that a little bit off camera. The way it essentially works is there is a lava blade up there um, which kills the mobs and then the loot goes through a water stream underneath which then falls down this drop chute and I pick it up from. So the idea is I stand here AFK and then I can pick up the loot. Uh, a lot of that is going to depend on time. I may do some surface lighting and I'm probably going to slab the interior of this cave. Now the problem is with doing that, I don't want to make the areas nearby here that I have not yet explored, uh, where the wool is and so forth, and make it max spawn conditions because that's going to make getting the wool and completing those dungeons a lot harder than it already is going to be. So we're going to try and avoid that if we can. Um, but I think that seeing as this is already lit up, it probably wouldn't make much of a difference to slab at all. On the surface, I'm just going to kind of put a torch grid around the dark room. And the idea behind it is going to be that the torch grid is going to extend out as far as where mobs stop moving and then despawn from. So at night time, the mobs will eventually despawn. And I'll probably put a fence up around it as well so that they can't wander into the non-despawning zone. Uh, so that's going to be kind of the aim here. This is what it looks like from the surface. So I'm not sure at the moment 
but we do have a dark room. It is working. It's just that it f its efficiency is very low. I do think a lot of the drops are being burned up, which may be something that we could look into fixing. I'm just not sure how, because I'm limited on what it is that I can use to kill the mobs. Um, I could build some sort of falling trap, but if I did that, it's eventually going to cap out and I can't AFK. Unless I uh, killed them outright, maybe. That's possibly a, a thing that I could do. But I don't know. I would have to make this a lot deeper. Um, I would have to go into the floor below to make that work. So I'm not sure about that. Uh, but it's a potential idea. I could make them fall. But then it wouldn't work too good with spiders as I have some water there to help maneuver the drops into one central location and that really wouldn't work too well with spiders so I may have to sacrifice the spiders for greater efficiency and the main reason I built this really was for gunpowder as I don't use zombie flesh I have plenty of bones and arrows from the skeleton trap and string was just kind of a nice addition to have above all else but we've been chatting here a minute and I've just not seen anything fall down the chute so it could be an efficiency problem, it could be a problem with uh, the drops being burned up. But even if I used a cactus, I don't know as that's really going to help. Because pushing the mobs into the cactus would then become tricky. So I'm going to have to think about that. I may look at some other designs on the wiki or whatever. And see if there is a way of kind of combating this efficiency loss. Uh, but again, it could just be, like there's a zombie there for example. Um, it could just be to do with that. I do wonder how many mobs are in this cave. Let's take a really quick look. There's a creeper there. I mean, there's not a lot of mobs in here, but there's dark spaces, which makes me think that there may be additional areas um, oop, around here that are kind of like honey pots to draw off natural spawns. That is a definite possibility, as there's only a couple of mobs around here in this cave. Um, but there is quite a bit of dark area, so maybe there's honey pots around and I'll have to look for those and, and light them up. Which then kind of brings us into the, uh, the max spawn problem again. So it's going to be kind of difficult trying to negotiate the best way forward with this dark room trap. But we do have one now. Uh, and it does work, it's just very slow. So we'll just have to kind of work something out with that. Maybe if I AFK'd for long enough, then it wouldn't really make a difference I, if I AFK'd overnight. But I would like it to produce a bit better rates than it is doing now. But I may mess with that another time. The important thing is that it is now done. Um, so I'm going to add a semi-automatic cactus farm. Well, a fully automatic cactus farm and a fully automatic egg farm now. So I will be back once I've made some more progress. Okay, guys, so another update. I have to admit this video is very updatey. Um, that's the easiest way I can think of to do this video while we work on the base here. So I've been working on a bunch of small improvements. Number one, as you can see, the different areas of my base now have item frames representing what they are. We have a chest for storage, brewing stand for the brewing room. I'm slowly finishing off that cake. Uh, enchantment table, extremely wasteful sign. That's the spare enchantment table we found in the spider's layer. We have a hoe to represent all the farming supplies. We'll get to this in a minute. Um, we have a blaze rod here for the blaze trap and the bed for the bedroom. And the bedroom is one of the new areas that I worked on. We've got a painting in here. Just a nice little simple bedroom. A proper place for the bed now. Or a little wardrobe there. Down there's the blaze trap. A monument represented by wool. Clock to tell me obviously what time it is. There's not really a sign I can put for exit. So I just actually have a sign with exit on it. And then we have this. So this is obviously the dark room we were just working on. And what's this? We actually have some loot now and cactus. So, first thing I should mention is I did hook up the cactus farm. That is one change that happened, and it's given me a decent amount of cactus. I've been AFK for maybe an hour or so, and this is the loot I've collected from it. So, we have a pretty decent amount of loot. I said that it would process zombies, skeletons, 
creepers and spiders so not so effective for spiders but you don't need string as much um, now I made some tweaks to this and what I did is I moved the lava blade up a little bit uh, I moved it one block higher most of the item drops were being destroyed in the lava because it was one block too low now they actually have a place to kind of find their way through and go down that drop shaft and it's still missing the egg farm part of it but aside from that I'm getting all the supplies I want from it I have put some stuff away um, in the chests here as well so this is not everything total I've collected it's got some bones there, arrows I'm getting quite a collection of stuff here and how are we doing on gunpowder let's see, pretty good and we want some cactus so we'll put the cactus away here I'm getting a pretty decent amount of cactus here too so I think it's time to do one thing and we're going to need all our gunpowder pretty much for this and some of the many many chests of sand that I keep picking up I think it's time to make that stack of TNT so we have now got access to TNT as a tactical weapon it's going to be so great having access to this so so great really just to be able to blow things up if we need to if we get in a really spawner heavy area I can drop some TNT boom one stack of TNT so that dark room is now beginning to pay for itself and I think we're going to put the TNT in there for right now so of the things actually left to do for today's session in the base we still need to add uh, the chicken farm which is going to give us eggs uh, it's not going to be a chicken farm for chicken meat just eggs I'm not really sure why I'm adding that because I don't really use eggs for anything it's kind of just a novelty to really make this base the complete package um, and I need to add some passive animal farms through here we need a place to farm cows, pigs, sheep and chickens for the actual meat uh, that they drop so you may be asking why don't I just farm cows um, well pigs are a good backup source of food uh, and I have tons of carrots so it's really a case of why not sheep in case I want to do anything with wool that's not to do with the monument so if I want to make a load of paintings, make a, make a load of beds, things of that nature I have harvested the tree farm once and it looks as if it's ready to be harvested again that's doing really good and chickens is for chicken meat which is again another great alternative to what we already uh, kind of have as potatoes so there's that. I may even look into trying to make a automatic chicken cooker but without the use of hoppers so I would have to obviously stand next to it but it auto cooks the meat for me um, I could hypothetically try and hook that up to this um, that would be really challenging but definitely possible so I may look into that but if I go that route I probably am not going to do that today that will be another project for another day probably when I've got some more equipment so definitely at the moment we're going to be building a pen for cows sheep and pigs and hooking up the egg part of the uh, the farm here which is going to attach to the dark room so getting a pretty decent collection of stuff already again uh, there's only uh, 16 cactus plants but it's certainly serving me what I need for the amount of cactus I'm going to be using uh, I may use it as a tactical weapon in the pyramid area as that seems like it would be pretty useful to kind of set up barricades and things like that so that is definitely something that we might look into using it for already back up to another stack of gunpowder I'm also going to need a way of lighting uh, the TNT off as well as that though before we head out for this little bit I would like to make myself a redstone lamp real quick here unless I have one I may have one no I do not I want to do something kind of fancy with the drop shoot there so we're going to need that and we're also going to need some wood so let's make a wooden pressure plate I want to see if this works I've never really tested it so I don't know if it does or not let's make a redstone lamp been going through a lot of redstone lamps lately so I want to break this ah, I've got some more string again put that there and then that on top now will that light up when an item hits it that's what I want to know 
Let's just drive the stone bricks. It does. Excellent. So we've got our own little mini indicator light so that whenever there is stuff on there to pick up, we can know. I don't know how annoying that sound is going to be. I may even do something funny with the note blocks. If that sound becomes excessive, then I may uh, just stop that and just do something else. <laughs> but it's a fun little idea so that I can see when there is loot in the in the chute there. So get some more gunpowder. Really, really nice. Pretty cool. I'm happy with that. Even more gunpowder. So that's going to be it for right now. I'm going to get to work on that chicken farm. How many eggs do I have? Not many. I'm going to have to collect some eggs, I think, before we can really start that farm properly. I also need to do some enchanting as well, and I may get on with that off camera because I would like to make some better tools and equipment and also enchant some books, see if I can get some decent tools going. Uh, cactus goes there. I'm thinking I might move sugarcane and cactus into its own chest because I'm going to be getting a lot of that more than anything else. And these seeds, I don't know what I'm going to do with all of these seeds, honestly. Um, I just kind of keep picking them up through harvesting the farm and I just keep stashing them away. One cool addition, maybe in the next update, would make seeds work at a furnace like saplings do. Uh, I guess it wouldn't really work though, but it's just a use for it, honestly. Uh, I think you can feed... Well, I guess you can feed seeds to chickens, so it's going to get somewhat handy, I guess. Um, I would like pumpkins as well, and I'm going to tear this up in preparation for adding nether wart to this base. But it's certainly coming together now. Um, this base, surprisingly, helps me a lot. Off camera, it really, really does. Um, I just love picking up the loot off that little thing. Um, it really does help me get on because I have all my items in a proper place. can brew potions if I need to. I have a dark room now and a cactus farm and soon to be egg farm. I've got access to the monument. Uh, we've got a bedroom and a blaze farm. We've got all the different crops able to be farmed and an enchanting area. So I may do this more often in future maps because I think that this is a great idea, particularly around the monument. Maybe not so much in other places. I would probably have a a smaller base in other places but being as we're near the monument I think it it makes sense and we're going to be here quite a bit and I actually like walking around here and I like recording videos in this area because it's really pleasant and it's not a little cramped up area the monument is very nice but there's not a whole lot of room down in the monument for stuff like this so you know a big farming area enchanting chest room uh, brewing a dark room so uh, I really like that. So there you go, there you have it. Um, dark room is complete. I mean I could probably improve the rates on it and I may do that even more by building more layers on it. I did slab some of the area underneath but I quickly realized that wasn't really having much of an impact due to the fact that there was not many mobs spawning and it was more to do with the trap itself not working over um, the environment that the trap is in. Uh, it doesn't work so hot at night but I have found that if I AFK overnight, it's going to get going again during the daytime. Mobs seem to despawn, which is great. So that's really, really good. So I think I'm going to get on with that farm now. I don't think I have anything else to say already up to another 10 bones in just the time that we have been talking here. Bones and arrows are not really what I need, though. Uh, Gunpowder is probably the thing I need the most out of this. I don't really need the rotten flesh much either. But it does give me... a uh, a reliable source of food for the base if I need it but that will probably eventually be chicken so yeah there you go uh, I'm pretty sure and I'm sure that Damara will enjoy watching this I'm pretty sure no one has built a dark room in safe haven before <laughs> um, certainly not in a base like this so I have everything to really lay siege to your map now all I need is probably a couple more diamonds to make some better diamond equipment my armor is good uh, I've got pretty good weapons and tools, so from here on in it's going to be a case of really laying siege to this map. Uh, I've got TNT now as a weapon, I have lava buckets, I have literally everything I need to really assault these areas and have a lot of fun. And uh, I hope you guys will be joining me for the ride. So, on to the next job. <laughs> Okay guys, so I've been working very hard in the base here, and I think I've got it just about wrapped up now. So I left you before saying I was going to do the passive mob farms, 
I have gone ahead and done that. We have cows and a sheep, apparently, in there that was not in there before. I uh, must have clipped through somehow. We have chickens. And down here, we have the actual sheep pen and pigs. And this right here, push the button, dispenses a pair of shears so I can go and shear the sheep. Need to breed a couple more up yet before I can really do that. So now we have a full passive mob farm. I guess he must have just been glitching through the wall or whatever. So we have that. Uh, that was the big project done. But that's not all I've done. I've also been working on a bunch of little minor things around the base, which are just kind of nice it is really. And we'll get back to this in a minute here. So first off, we have a map on the wall now. A uh, nice little map out there that I spent some time crafting up and working with. Um, we've got that on the wall just for a nice little bit of detail there. I worked on the skeleton trap corridor. So down here, just around this corner, used to be really messy and horrible. But I've now cleaned that up and made it look nice, got rid of all the torches, etc. So that's been done. And probably the most notable addition is this right here. So this is a T flip flop. What was that? Oh, it was that. Okay. Uh, I don't have a pressure plate right now. Let me get one here. So this is a T flip flop. And what happens here is this is our input and this is our output. So you stand on the T flip flop pressure plate here, activates this redstone, which turns this torch off, which then. Uh, deactivates this repeater which removes the lock on this repeater and also allows this torch to turn on and activate it through and then this is your output right here so if I stand on it as you can see it turns off um, although it's a clock apparently I guess this only works with the stone pressure plates I think um, that's probably why because this was working earlier and I haven't changed anything other than the fact that I had a stone pressure plate here which I've now used I think there is a stone pressure plate in my redstone chest somewhere yeah here we go I'm gonna put the wooden one away a water bucket does not belong in there so we can put that away I'm carrying a bunch of junk right now from working on this project here which is uh, why my inventory is a bit of a mess so let's try it with a stone one Huh. I don't know why it's doing that. Uh, it was working just fine earlier. Um, there we go. Uh, the one over here, though, that I copied does work, so I'm not sure what's going on there with that. Um, <laughs> trying to ruin my demo. So I used it in the mushroom farm, and what this does is it keeps the lights on when I'm not in here to prevent mobs from spawning, but when I walk in turns them off so I can grow my mushrooms or whatever and then when I walk out it turns the lights back on so just a nice little detail there to help out with the mushroom farm nothing too extensive of course and um, not really sure why the demo that I had set up here is not working correctly any longer um, I don't think it's anything to do with that um, yeah I really don't know <laughs> I'm guessing it may be to do with this redstone lamp right here I had nowhere really to build it that was suitable so I just kind of stuck it in the middle here pick up those items so I guess we'll take this down now Ah, I think it was that redstone lamp that was messing it up um, that's what it looks like pick that up so I think now we're at the point where everything I wanted to do today has been successfully done uh, we built the dark room we built the bedroom we made some improvements to the farm and we have a passive mob farm we have the tree farm and I think now the only real thing we're missing is nether wart, which is going to go right here. And for that, we need soul sand. And that's probably going to be our next quest, honestly, to try and find some soul sand. Uh, we may just go exploring and do some reconnaissance in some different areas to see if we can see some, as that would enable me to start brewing potions, which is quite a big deal, honestly. And we've not really had that opportunity yet. I keep picking up potions out of boxes, but... I haven't really used them too much as I can't brew my own, so I'm kind of keeping them. <laughs> They're rather valuable at the moment. I do need to work on getting some better gear. I'm going to probably do some enchanting off camera, try and upgrade the sword. I'm probably going to do some repairing and probably some combining as well, make my bow a bit better. But we're going to be using worker from now on as my pickaxe. Um, May upgrade that to efficiency 5, may not. I haven't really decided yet. Depends on if I get an efficiency book.
But I'm fine probably with an iron shovel. I'm also going to enchant an axe so that I can cut down the trees in the tree farm faster. I'm going to be working on farming up the crops, breeding the animals, things like that. I'm hopefully going to be able to switch on to steak pretty soon as my main food source now because I do have an easily accessible cow farm. So I hope you've enjoyed today's episode off from adventure, and it's nice once in a while to do a little bit of building. Um, we may do this more often. I have some ideas of things that I would like to do in Safe Haven, as well as just collecting the wool and the research notes and finding the pirates. So we may do this a little bit more often. Uh, getting plenty of supplies now. The fact that we have that stack of TNT is going to be great. We're going to start carrying that around and probably a flint and steel to light it with, so that we can start and use that in dungeons now. Getting lots and lots of supplies here for various different things from the dark room. I've almost got enough gunpowder to make another stack of TNT just in the time that I've been working in this base here. So, thanks for the redstone, Damara. It was very helpful. I still have plenty of it left, too. So, I think at this point, probably going to call it an episode here, guys. Next episode, we will, one way or another, be going on an adventure. Um, not sure exactly what we we will be doing yet, but we will be going on an adventure again. We've just done this little building episode here. And this base, I feel now, is almost complete. There may be one or two little minor tweaks I might add to it over time, but there's nothing that I would consider overwhelmingly huge now. Like, we just need to add a simple nether wart farm. Half of these are going to be become pumpkins and stuff like that. There is nothing major now that I plan to add. I think that we've got pretty much everything. Um, I may add like a snow golem farm, something like that, where I can farm snow if I decide I want to have some fun with snowballs, that kind of thing. But really, I don't see as there's going to be too much more that's uh, going to change. So, next episode it will be back to adventure. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode guys and I hope to see you next time. So until then, see you later and have a good day.